Hi everybody, this is Mrs. Ellsworth and what we're going to be talking about now is we're going to be talking about the corrections for our quiz that we just took and I'm going to go through it kind of quickly um, to um, make sure I get enough time in on it. But do you remember when we talked about rectangular prisms? These were some of the ones that the students did really well on because they followed my ideas of, um, hold on here, of um, writing the numbers on each side. And remember that you've got a top and a bottom, a side and a side, and a front and a back. And so when you do that, then you are actually just going to go and recognize that you're going to take, oh, that's a two. Anyways, um, take your two <laughs> times um, a front because there is also a back. So that's why you times it by two. And the side and another side and the top is the same as the bottom. So let's go ahead and, and put those numbers in this formula. And so we'll get... 2 times the quantity of 9 plus 21 plus 21. So that's going to equal 30 plus that's going to equal 51 inside the parentheses times that 2 in the front. And so you'll get an answer of 102 square centimeters. What I want you to do is I want you to also make sure that you are calculating these correctly. So use your calculator, make sure that you're getting them and um, stop and pause it as you need to, need to. Now on some of these problems like stuff that has got triangular triangles in them, Students had troubles with it. Um, I would have like one problem I had, um, like a third of the kids get the same exact, I mean, get it right, excuse me, two thirds get it right, and then a third of them I had a whole bunch of different answers, not hardly anything matched up. So, so we got to stay organized any way that you can to make sure that you are successful in this. Okay, so moving on, let's go ahead and look at the next one. Okay, so here's our next rectangle prism here, and so we'll go ahead and look at that, and I still have the same idea for a formula. The front, that's the side that we see. The top is the side that we see. It's the same as the bottom, and then the side is the side that we see, and it's the same as it's on the other side. And I forgot to say this, the same as on the back. So we go and multiply those by 2. So my front, I got an 8, and my top, I got a 12, and my um, side I've got 6 so I'll go and add these all up so that's going to be 26 times 2 so I get 52 square meters it's squared because of course it is surface area okay make sure you can calculate them okay next one we looked at on the test was a triangular base prism and I've got all this extra thinking here here is the triangle Here's the base of it. I just decided to sit it on this side in my imagination, and this one it was the side that we that we measure with. And I probably got this drawing backwards. But but the reason why I drew it like this is because I bet that a lot of people accidentally went and used the 6.6, .6, and that's on the hypotenuse here. We do not use that. We use the two sides that are attached to the 90 degree angle. Period. The only reason why we've got this on here is so that we can measure out this um, side that it's sitting on that rectangle side that it's sitting on, we need to know is a 6.6 .6 times a 9. Anyway, so I was just looking at this and I was noticing that, hey, um, base times height times 2 is this triangle. The, excuse me, base times height divided by 2 is that triangle, but we've got two triangles. So if you look at a rectangle and you go and divide it, you've got two triangles in there. And so it's really just base times height because those two twos will cancel out. And um, so you just need to do base times height for those. Anyway, um, when we look at the sides also, so we've got to add up two triangles. It's just going to be time base times height to get that. And then we've also got two, we've got three rectangles. One is nine. All of them will be a length of nine. One is nine times four. So this is nine times four. Okay. And then we've got five times, 5.2 times nine for this side that's up here. And then the one that's sitting on is a 6.6 .6 times 9. So I go and I went and I multiplied all those. And now then I added them up. Okay. Here I did my base times height on this one to get that. And then I add these three up. I got 142. So that a total of 163 square millimeters. Okay. Where might students run into troubles on these? I think that this 6.6 .6 might be a problem when you're calculate, calculating the triangle base. So you need to beware, beware, beware. Okay. The next one was a cylinder. 
K and cylinders have a specific formula, don't they? It's 2 pi r squared times 2 pi r h. This is the two circles, okay, the top and the bottom bases, and then this right here is the soup can label, isn't it? Okay, 2 pi r is the circumference of the circle, so that ends up being one side, and then we've also got h. Okay, so I went and, circled, went and inserted all of my numbers I need. The radius is 4, and then the height is 15. So I went and used my calculator, and first time I did this, I got it wrong. So I advise you to take your time, make sure that you're going to get it right, um, and go and calculate them. Notice it's got this plus in here, so maybe you want to write down the 100 and sum that it is here, and then the 300 and sum that it is over there, then add it up. Okay, make sure that you are able to calculate these now so that you can calculate them correctly when we are taking the, the quiz, the retake. Okay, so moving on to the next one. Okay, here we go. We've got a, ooh, a triangle-based prism pyramid. And so that right there's got that special formula. I think I wrote mine a little bit different because of how I've, I'm used to it. So you got area of the base, and I think you've got one half of the, um, perimeter times the slant height, which is L. I always do mine just like I do my triangles. I do PL all divided by 2. Same exact thing as this portion of it. Notice that this formula's got this plus in here, so I can see a lot of people going and putting this in their calculator. Um, I can see them going in there and putting 35.1 plus 227 times 18. Well, at that point, now the calculator is actually taking 18 times this quantity here, and then I'll go and take the whole quantity and divide it by 2, and that's not right. So recognize that you should be putting parentheses around these, or else doing your order of operations, doing your multiplication division first, equals, then add it up. Okay, that's what you should be doing. Not counting on a calculator to do order of operations because it doesn't get it always. Okay. I should say one more thing about this. If you put this in parentheses, it will do parentheses first. Okay. So then when I went and multiplied that out and then added the 35.1 to it, then I get 278.1 square meters. Okay. I think the next one is a rectangular base prism. Oh, square base pyramid. And so we'll go ahead and look at that. Now I went and wrote it out how we had it in the book. Sorry, I didn't earlier do that. Anyway, so the area, so sometimes it doesn't hurt to go and write out what everything is, what each variable is. So here we've got 11, that equals a slant height. Now we know what the base is, it's 9 times 9 for 81. We also know the perimeter is 9 plus 9 plus 9 plus 9, or else 9 times 4 for 36. So we'll go and insert that in here. Area of the base, 81. 81, okay, one half, perimeter, 36, and then times the slant height of 11. And then when you went and calculated that out, you should have gotten 179. Practice it. Please, practice it. Okay, next one. We've got another cylinder. Woohoo! Oopsie. Anyway, our cylinder has got this formula, 2 pi r squared. 2 pi r h, here's for the two circles, and this one is for the label. Now, notice the 1.5, and I'm I'm always leery and worried that somebody's going to goof up with that and, and go and put that whole diameter of 3 on there, and then that would be a problem. Okay, so 2 times pi times, we've got 1.5 squared. 2, again, times 3.14, times 1.5, times the h of 6. Okay, and when you did that, you should have gotten 70.7 square inches. Okay. Next one. Think to yourself, how would I solve this one? What is that thing? That thing is a triangle-based pr pr prism. And, again, I went and did that thing where I was thinking, like, hey, uh, I got one-half base times height of my triangle. Okay, and then I've got multiplying by two because there is two triangles on this thing. There is two triangles. Okay, there is two triangles there. Anyway, so let's go ahead and see what this thing looks like. Okay, so I've got my two triangles. I just take base times height of that because, again, it's times two. This, these one half times two equals one, so it's eight times five. Okay, and then I went and multiplied my, my three different 
my, my measurements to get my three different rectangles. I've got an 8 times 9. I've got a 15 times 9. And I've got a 17, this, this slanted one right here, times 9. Okay, and so there's all three of those. And when I went and add a, multiplied them, then I add add those up to the also the 120 for the two triangles. And I'll get a grand total of 480 square millimeters. Okay, these three sides add up to 360, and then the two triangles add up to 220 to 120. Okay, and I think this might be the last one. Yep. Okay, so the surface area for our extra credit one was one that had um, um, five for a radius and six for a height. So three times pi times the radius squared, 25, or however you want to do that. Then two times pi again times the five for the radius and times the six for the height. And when you calculate that all out, you should get 345.4 square feet. Okay. So this showed you how I went and inserted in all the numbers into the formulas to make sure that you get the correct calculation. Can you calculate correctly? Did you find that you were finding errors with it? Did you, did you figure out what the correct shape is for each one? Did you figure out what the correct formula was for each one? Do you need to write something more on your um, sheet? I've Zoomed with a couple of students, and they all agreed that they need to go and organize their formula sheet just a little bit better so that they were more organized before they went and took their, re their, their first original quiz. It is a problem. And sometimes you're so stressed that, that you do see the wrong type of shape, so you need to think it through a little bit better. And so um, I will just leave it that and um, tell you that you need to do this retake before this week is over. Okay, so before, let's see, that would be um, May 1st would be your last day to do this. Oh, we got a short week this week. We've only got four days. So, so it'd be April 30th. Okay, so I will see you when I see you. Okay, take care.